Welcome to another episode of Fortinet Live. My name is Jonas, security strategist at FortiGuard Labs, and joining me today is Arturo. Arturo, how are you doing today? Hi, man. I'm super excited to be here. This is actually the first time that I'm be here with you, so I'm super excited to talk about uh, CyberPad cover questions. I'm super excited as well for multiple reasons. We have been in the same team now for over a year, but we have been both with the same company for many, many years. But we want to talk today a little bit about career paths in cybersecurity because both of us went to different journeys and I think we have over 3 million open positions in cybersecurity globally, like uh, all companies to combine. So there are a lot of people who are needed in, in the cybersecurity industry. And I would like to hear from you a little bit. What are you doing exactly these days at FortiGuard Labs? Well, that's uh, that's a really, really good question, right? Because uh, currently I work as a threat intelligence strategist uh, at Fortinet Research Team, that is uh, FortiGuard Labs. Uh, but I'm uh, actually focused in Latin America and Caribbean regions. So we combine uh, data science uh, with security to provide tactics to support security portfolio planning. But the main, the main thing here is to understand the behavior of the attackers uh, using our telemetry, right? We can build amazing things and we can understand what happened for every single region or every single industry. And once we understand that, we can start building a, a, a cyber defense strategy using all the, those information, right? Yeah, cybersecurity is such a big topic. There's so many different roles which we need to, to fill. And you and I, we have a similar role that we focus on the research part of the intelligence part. So it's about understanding what is cybercrime, understanding what are the actors out there doing, taking advantage of our systems on the internet and how do they get access to these environments and what kind of tactics, techniques and procedures they use. So. We are really focusing on that specific part, but of course, there's so many other departments in, in cybersecurity, for example, even if you're interested in, in compliance or in auditing, or you're really well skilled in software developing, you might be interested in, in secure coding. So there's so many ways how people can end up in cybersecurity based on, on their interest. For you specifically, how did you end up here? What was your path to, and why did you decide to go into threat intelligence in the end? Well, uh, that's that's a long story, right? Because um, we we are we talk about this uh, before, uh, you know, right? My parents are teachers, so in my home, the education is was always a priority. So, uh, technology it's been always in my life, right? Also, my father is a uh, telecommunication engineer, so I have this uh, all information always in my life, right? Uh, so, I started because. Uh, I have a, I'm a tele tech telecommunication engineer too, but I, I also continue my my uh, studies, um, finishing a master degree, but all in administration. But when I when I finish my uh, telecommunications degree, uh, I have my first job offer, and uh, I already have been working at some process. Right, uh, my employer at that time told me that uh, I should be working in cybersecurity. I didn't know anything about that at, at the time, right? But he told me that if uh, I already have the skills on networking and I understand process and best practice, the path will be easy. That's the first time that I heard the word cybersecurity and uh, I start working with that. And for me, that's been an amazing, an amazing path because I have the opportunity to learn a lot of things, to know amazing people. And of course, be uh, uh, in constant learning that it's something that I love, right? Yeah, I think you mentioned one point, which is like you come from a different background and then kind of transitioning to cybersecurity because in the end, there's so many paths how you can end up in, in cybersecurity. And for, for me, for example, it was networking. So when I started off my career, I was not the, the best uh, skilled programmer out there. I didn't have a lot of fun doing like software developing, but I was more keen on operating systems, on to network, wanted to understand how does the internet actually work. And it's like this fundamental this foundation where we need to understand how does it work? How does it work to go from A to B? And then on top of that, I was more curious about, hey, wait a minute, if everyone can communicate with everyone, how do we make sure these system, systems are properly secured? And that's how my interest started going with cybersecurity. So I think it's important to have the basics together because cybersecurity can be quite intimidating for a lot of people. And they're like, they don't really know where to start. 
But in my opinion, it's important to understand what are you actually interested in doing, because it really depends on your skill set, on your motivation, what kind of interests do you have. And cybersecurity is something which touches a lot of these interests in the end. So it really comes down to what you're curious about. For example, I heard you have been recently studying for your PhD and you're, a, I should call you Dr. Arturo now for, a, <laughs> for being a, a doctor in, in artificial intelligence. How did you end up making this decision to, to go that deep into a specific topic? Well, uh, that's, uh, that's all about in my family, right? So my uh, father and my sisters, they already, they already have a PhD, but in different, in different things. So for me, it's what like, um, I've been doing this for a long time, working with, uh, with technology and right now about the research and cybersecurity. And I, and I wanted to use all my knowledge, but, uh, to go deeper, right. To understand how we can use all the data that we have, uh, to predict things, right and to make good decisions. So that's that was my first driver uh, to start uh, this a specific a specific journey in, in the PhD, right? That's, it's, it's very hard, but, uh, but also it's, it's, uh, it's amazing all the things that you, that you learn in all that time, right? But, but also let me tell you one thing, because this, for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a great story. The first job that I told you before, uh, the first technology that I met uh, when I started working on cybersecurity was Fortinet. They told me, "Hey, you you want to you want to start a work with cybersecurity with firewalls, antivirus, anti spams, and all the technology." And the technology was Fortinet. So Fortinet has been in all my career, and I'm very grateful with that because uh, it was an amazing journey. All the information that we already are creating, all the products, all the solutions, and it's amazing how how the things end up right now working on the research team with you. Yeah, definitely. And I remember there was a time where we both have been at the same company, but you worked in the local team in Mexico. I was back in Switzerland and now we are both covering a region. For me, it's Asia Pacific. For you, it's Latin America. And we had the opportunities to move in, in different business units inside the company. And it took a lot of steps to, to get here. But if, if you would go all the way back to the beginning of your career and or you would be like a mentor now for a specific mentee, maybe being at the university and, and this specific person has the idea to go into security at some point. What would you recommend as like the basic foundations to, to people who are interested in cybersecurity and how to transition deeper into that specific industry? Well, uh, for me, it's all about these uh, three key points, right? First one, discipline, uh, patience, and, and of course, passion, right? Uh, the first one, uh, if we have discipline, uh, we, we can work uh, constantly on, on, on a goal, right? So the first time that I joined Fortinet, I had the opportunity to attend the Fortinet Labs uh, in, meeting in Vancouver. So during the during a whole week, I was surrounded uh, by experts to talk, talking about uh, an amazing topics, right? About cyber, cyber crime, cyber security development. But once I understand uh, the opportunity that presents to me, uh, I have followed the goal to prepare myself every single day to become part of this great team, right? So be patient, be have discipline, and of course, uh, the most important thing is uh, passion, right? Because if you love what you do, uh, you want to have uh, to work any day of your life. And and I really, really believe that this uh, amazing phrase because it's important to love what you do, right? Yeah, I can definitely emphasize on these points. I, I like how you point them out and they go pretty much hand in hand, especially the one for me, I think, which helped me the most during my career is always making sure I'm surrounded by people who are way smarter than me and that can learn a lot from because that's that's how you get pushed. That's how you're motivated. And as well, there's so many fascinating people in our industry who are very, very happy to share their knowledge. and. If you're a curious person who, as you mentioned, puts in the hard work and has enough discipline to really work on, on their goals, there's so many ways to transition into that industry and move toward the position which we were aiming for. So I definitely agree with you. But on top of that, I think it, it is the, the main key point is definitely find something which you're actually curious about because the beginning can be very tough and sometimes it's super frustrating when things are not working out. I remember for me, when I was getting more and more into offensive security in the beginning, I almost threw away my keyboard out of the window. I was so frustrated. None of my techniques were working. I was like, why can everyone do this except me? So you have like this imposter syndrome. 
but it just takes time and sometimes it takes a lot of time because things are not easy but if you have something that you truly are passionate about it's so much easier to actually spend a lot of time and make progress instead of if it's something which you're just say, chasing for different reasons yeah also um, i got a question for you you should tell just your your secret right because you achieve one of the most important offensive cybersecurity certifications in um in a really really short time what was your secret man what would you achieve that I, I remember there was a, a dark winter back in switzerland and i pretty much every day i i did nothing else than work and prepare for this certification and um, i i like doing so not because i think certification are the most important things i think they can help a lot with like a certain syllabus and the motivation to achieve it but in the end, I think whatever you want to learn, it's about sitting down, putting a lot of hours and sometimes take some sacrifices to achieve your goals. So that was definitely an interesting time. And a lot of things I learned back then is now being something which I can compound on top of that. So it was definitely very valuable. And it's also something which I would recommend to my younger self or to someone who's starting like the early 20s that I'm a big fan of investing a lot in, in something we love doing in our early 20s, in our mid 20s, and really putting in extra work. Because over the long term, we're still both of us in the beginning of our careers. There's so many years ahead of us. But whatever you have done in the beginning, you have like this compound interest, very similar, like in investing, it works in, in the career. You get so much more out of it and you can um, accelerate your career quite quite quickly if you if you really put in the hard work in the beginning. With that being said, it doesn't mean you cannot change industry later because you probably learned other skills in different industries which you can use then to move towards cybersecurity. So in the end, it really matters about discipline, passion, as you, as you mentioned very well, Arturo. Awesome, awesome. Um, with that being said, we almost reached the time limit. I want to thank you for taking time for participating in this Fortinet Live webinar, and hopefully we see us soon again. Thanks so much, Arturo. Thank you. Gracias. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining in, and we wish you all a wonderful day. Bye-bye.